All right, on a separate note, uh, last week we brought you the fiery uh, interchange with Attorney General Holder and uh, Congressman uh, Gohmert. And we talked to Congressman Gohmert, we played back the cuts, and then after this uh, interaction, which these two got personal at each other, and it looked like it was personal, though no one would admit that it was personal, he went and spoke at Al Sharpton's event, uh, commemorating uh, Al, Sharpton. Uh, Al Sharpton and the Civil Rights Law, which passed in 1964. Right. He said this, and I concluded, as many of you, that he was referring to race in America as it relates to the Attorney General and the President. You make the call. Forget about me. You look at the way the Attorney General of the United States was treated yesterday by a House committee. Had nothing to do with me. Forget that. What Attorney General has ever had to deal with that kind of treatment? What President has ever had to deal with that kind of treatment? And so uh, there he was at the National Action League here in New York City last week, a uh, predominantly African-American crowd. Some said, okay, well, he was, uh, I think we had Bill O'Reilly on uh, the next day, and he said, well, he may have been playing to the crowd. Well, now Mr. Eric Holder says, I wasn't playing the race card. I was simply talking about the lack of civility in Washington, D.C. Back in the old days, people were what much more civil. Now, they're not. You mean the behind the backroom deals that LBJ made all Democrats and Republicans do that's unsavory, that things that we saw in the movie Lincoln produced by uh, Steven Spielberg, there was more civility then? It was almost blackmail oh, back then. Or was it the civility that was paid to John Ashcroft, Alberto Gonzalez, Janet Reno, Meese? We can right. go on and on. John Mitchell, uh, look at those in the position that Eric Holder has held and the resistance or criticism that they have faced for different reasons. Some some may say, look, this is more, this is not about race. This is about the lack of pace when it comes to providing documents about the Fast and Furious right. issue and why the truth hasn't been given to the American people. Yeah, if Congress is going to have oversight and you ask the executive branch, can you provide those documents, and they never come, well, that's a big problem. This is about, I think, ginning up the base of the Democratic Party who are so desperate to hold on to the Senate and not get routed out of the House again, even more, uh, have been more uh, overruled than they currently are. Here weighing in is Dr. Ben Carson and Reverend Faulkner. I think it's the, the one of the oldest tricks in politics. If you don't like the story, divert attention away from it. The Democrats are simply trying to ra rally their base and using the race card. It's appalling. We don't need more division in our country. Listen, race is a very touchy subject for all of us, and we may disagree, but it's our ideas that win the day or lose the day. You know, you can't oppose anything that a progressive black person is doing if you're white without being calling a racist. You can't oppose abortion on demand without being called anti-woman. You can't uh, uphold traditional uh, marriage without being called homophobic. You know, this is really a state of sadness, immaturity, and I think the solution to it is for the people to become much more sophisticated in their analysis and not simply accept what the manipulators are trying to pull over. And in other words, over the you, you can't be a, a low information voter. You got to know what's going on in the world. And right. you, when you see a little 30 second ad where they say, there's a war on women, and if that's all you know, that's all you know. But if you actually know the story, you have education. And what did Steve Israel say over the weekend? He's uh, the Democratic leader. He's in charge of getting more Democrats in the House. Not going to happen. Doesn't look like. He says the GOP base is animated by racism. Oh, really? Racist that, elements. Uh, racist, uh, racist elements. I have uh, racism. But uh, he also said that this is what he's actually pushing. So if, if Eric Holder just happened to make those comments on a Wednesday and Steve Ezreal is making the comments on a Sunday, it seems kind of interesting, the timing. Well, and also, is there a closed audience? If you're there making a speech now, we know that those speeches exist in a much broader audience now. We also have a president who promised to unite, not divide, when it comes to uniqueness in terms of race, ethnicity, belief, religion, gender. Um, do you believe that has happened? Some would, would actually argue that it's gotten worse in, under this administration, and I think that's disheartening for the American people who would just rather have the real discussion. You know, the hyper focus on race when it's not there makes people defend it when it's not there. And then sure. when it is there, nobody's there to look and see and call it out. Well put. All right. Uh, thanks very much for joining us on this. Um, let's see. You, Tuesday, you weren't here. Monday. So. Tuesday. Take up yeah. the calculators um, for the tax. It's tax day. That's what I was thinking. That's why she's wearing green. She's Speaking to a woman who doesn't pay her taxes, this <laughs> heaven out. That's right. See, now we got the two right. colors Hello. here. Right. You can look at tax day as either being in the red with Heather right. or it's symbolizing money with the green. Or she could be communist.